So we know the pressure that they feel. We know the frustration. And and it's oftentimes very scary, right? And vulnerable for these companies and these leaders, um, you know, to say this is what needs to be done. And, and maybe I need to change and maybe I need to move or maybe there's been mistakes made. So and also saying we know that your North Star is here. These are the steps you need to take in the way you look at the work and how you think about the people and how you've evolved your strategy you know, and, and what resources you need, and then eventually, obviously, structure to enable that. A lot of companies are a long way from realizing that they need to change and don't know what to do <laughs> to really drive the organizational change, which is where you guys come in. So I'm sure you, you uh, see a lot of resistance in terms of having that conversation with, with leaders in the marketing organizations of big CPG companies. Uh, how do you handle that with senior leadership? How do you approach oh, it? Great what are the uh, what are the key key challenges that you're facing? Well, that's a great question. I think you know the the place where the partnering group ultimately comes in, and and one of the advantages of the partnering groups model is all of the partners, all of the consultants at the partnering group, we've actually done the work. We've been in their shoes. We've been in their seats. We've been practitioners. Mm -hmm. So we know the pressure that they feel. We know the frustration. And, and it's oftentimes very scary, right? And vulnerable for these companies and these leaders, um, you know, to say, this is what needs to be done. And, and maybe I need to change. And maybe I need to move. Or maybe there's been mistakes made. So I think the fact that we've done the work um, you know, so so they don't necessarily have to uh, as much. We we can get into the weeds. We can get into the detailed process mapping because we really know what drives the step change. So I think it's first really establishing that credibility and trust, and ensuring that you know ultimately our clients you know feel heard. And then I think the other thing that we do is we not only obviously want to understand where that organization is, where do they want to go. How are how close are they to getting to where they want to be and and really being able to benchmark, you know, for these executives, where are they today and then really honing in on the work. What is the work required to get them from point A to point B? Because ultimately, when you're clear in the work, then you can be clear on the jobs to be done. Then mm -hmm. you can be clear, you know, obviously on on where the strategy needs to evolve. And then the org design work easily flows out of there. And I think, you know, with those phases, we can ultimately have some great conversations with our clients in relation to what is the desired performance? Like, you're here today, where do you wanna be? Is where you wanna be right for the timelines you have for your growth goals? And again, getting into and assessing those strategies understanding even everything from their job descriptions and how they're mm. rewarding and awarding performance, all of those components, the culture, right? Is their culture ready for this disruption and this change? And we help get them there as well. Um, and so addressing that entire landscape and doing so in a, relation, in a way that we are relating to our clients because we've been there and that we're bringing them on the change journey with us. And also saying, we know that your North Star is here these are the steps you need to take in the way you look at the work and how you think about the people and how you've evolved your strategy, you know, and, and what resources you need and then eventually obviously structure to enable that. Awesome. I uh, couldn't agree more. And I think even, you know, backing up a bit before strategy, you mentioned North Star and having a big vision and understanding where the market's going and how you're going to be able to compete better in the future and what it's going to take to get there. Of course, they may need some help to understand all the steps needed to get there, but it all starts with, does the CMO or the CEO have a vision for how right. the organization will operate within a new external environment, new marketplace, evolving marketplace? And um, it, it just reminds me of a conversation I had with a Fortune 500 CMO a couple of weeks ago where she said, right now, 70 to 80% of the work that we're doing is, is uh, being done by human capital. Right, so all the all the all the decisions we're making are all it's all human effort. Right. Within the next five years, we want seventy to eighty percent of our decisions to be made in an automated way. 
so that that ina- that's that's the, the kind of vision and structure that that has to change and the people if you think about all the talent that's needed to enable that leverage the technology and the data that's available to enable that vision to come to fruition Absolutely.